What is up guys, it's your boy Swell, I'm here, back with another Classic Wild video for Cataclysm Classic. Now today we are watching a video by Riani, where he reviews Cataclysm Classic based on having played it for 400 hours. Is it good or is it bad? Now before I watch this video, I have also played Cataclysm quite a bit. I do believe, based on the content I've seen from Riani in the past, we play the game a lot differently. He is a much better raider than I am, he's probably cleared the raids on Heroic already, if he hasn't cleared it multiple times, and I believe he's played Cataclysm on various other servers in the past as well. Me, on the other hand, I haven't played Cataclysm since OG Cataclysm, and even now I've only done the raids on Normal, I haven't even cleared it on Normal, and the reason why is that me and my guild had a falling out very early, which has made me basically quit raiding. Raiding. Now the thing is, the only raid that I'm really excited for in Cataclysm myself is Firelands anyway, maybe Dragon Soul to a certain extent, but mainly Firelands, so phase 1 for me was never really a raiding phase, and the thing is, I wanted to join a casual guild which I was able to do, but they were a little bit too casual, to the point where they would do a pull, and then they would have a 10 minute break and then do another pull, and then have a 10 minute break. And we're not talking about 10 minute strategy breaks, we're talking about 10 minute bio breaks, 10 minute food breaks, smoke breaks. Just like your typical, I don't know what this is, like, retirement home guild, where you're able to do one pull, then you have to go and take a nap. And then after that, we also had some loot problems where people, even though they were super casual, which is kind of what I was looking for, they also wanted to be really extremists on loot, to the point where they really only wanted you to roll on best in slot items, even though we were only clearing normal, which was never stated in the loot rules, but apparently you were only allowed to, or not really allowed to, but they talked negatively to you, if you rolled on items that were not on your best in slot list, even though it was a huge upgrade like a second best in slot option, and stuff like that. So we had a lot of loot problems, and we had a lot of other problems as well, and overall just not a good match for me personally, which made me basically quit raiding already after one or two weeks of doing the raids. Which, well, that was my whole raiding thing, but either way, phase 1 I wanted to focus more on leveling alts anyway, leveling alts and making gold, which I've been able to do. I've made over a million gold so far in this phase, and I have leveled 4 level 85s, I have a couple of level 84s, a couple of level 83s, and just overall burning rested experience to level a couple of alts. And I love leveling in Cataclysm, I really do. I love the dungeons, I love the zones, I love the quests, I love the lore. Overall, well, it's a really good dungeon to level in if you ask me and I'm having a good time. I'm not playing it like 20 hours a day though but I'm having a very good time and overall I've been enjoying Cataclysm more than I was expecting I think and I feel like that's the general um, feeling that a lot, lot of people have. A lot of people went into Cataclysm with a reserved mindset and they figured out it's a lot more fun than they were expecting. Either way, let's check out the video and what Riani has to say. So here we go, I played 400 hours of Cataclysm Classic, is it good or is it bad? With Cataclysm having been out for over a month and with me putting in over 400 hours into the game, god I need a new hobby, <laughs> it's time to take a look at how good or bad the expansion actually is. We've heard plenty over the last few months over why Cataclysm was either the beginning of the end or why it's actually way better than people think. But after putting in the hours, how good or bad is it actually? No. Well, any expansion release is always a period of thrill and excitement. I cannot remember an expansion launch in the history of WoW where I did not find the new expansion fun and engaging for at least a week or two. But after putting in the equivalent of 16 days of gameplay into the expansion, the rose-tinted goggles have come off and it's time to review the expansion for what it is. Let's get some disclaimers out of the way. We're still in the first phase of the expansion, but with no new content coming in later phases apart from the raids that I'm already very familiar with, I feel pretty safe in giving my opinion of the expansion at this stage. Second, this is seen from the perspective of a high-end raider who has already cleared the raids on Heroic many Told times you. over on many characters and may not necessarily be reflective of the average person's experience. Was that a 99.7? 
average pars that I'm seeing here. Okay, dude. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> It's on heroic many times over on many characters and may not necessarily be reflective of the average person's experience. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at what Cataclysm has to offer. Before jumping into any of the features, let's talk a little bit about class design and the revamps a lot of the classes got moving into this expansion. I can't speak to as how much of a win or lose this was for all classes out there, but by and large, the majority of classes got improved in my opinion. Most classes move to a builder slash spender rotation with a priority based system with huge rewards for someone playing optimally. Despite the somewhat less flexible talent trees, a lot of the choices we have to make feel impactful and force us into making value trades based on our playstyle and what the rate values. As a blood DK, I have a ton of decisions to make in regards to if I want to optimize for damage, survivability, single target or AoE. As a warrior, I have to make decisions on if I want to optimize my damage output with deep wounds, kite with piercing howl, provide one of the strongest external cooldowns in the game with safeguard, or go into tactical mastery in order to stay on stance. I know some classes are not as happy with the changes made to their class in Cataclysm and some of the degenerate <laughs> snapshotting you have to do in order to compete for the high damage rankings. But overall, have you seen how much damage Demonology of Warlocks can do? It is a super hard class to play, and you need to have the best snapshot gear of all time, like the best mastery gear of all time, but holy the damage they pump. Their openers... insane. Well, the rotation feels more dynamic and make you feel like you have more of an impact, which is a big W in my book. In regards to features, the big selling point of Cataclysm originally was the revamping of the old world. And having leveled through it, it's quite a welcome change in the context of the more modern version of our classic journey. Yeah. That being said, a lot of people don't really get to experience it as either they have all the alts they want already, or they sit in a capital city while spamming the random dungeon fighter instead of questing. Not to mention the level boost that takes you all the way to level 80. When one of the core features of the expansion is something that people don't meaningfully engage with, then the expansion as a whole can feel a little bit lackluster. The leveling experience from 80 to 85 is in my opinion really good, yeah. and far more enjoyable than previous expansions. I agree. The zones are engaging, fast paced, and have a narrative thread weaving together all of the zones quests to make you feel like you're progressing through a story, rather than just looting 10 things to turn in for experience. Leveling through it for the first time felt great, even if a few of the zones had some bottlenecks at launch due to the large amount of people competing for tax and resources. But after leveling a few alts, I'm definitely at the stage where I just want to get to 85 as efficiently as possible and have thus put a lot of mobs in Halls of Lightning into an early retirement as a consequence. Once 85, the true Cataclysm experience begins, and as with any expansion thus far, that means heading into heroic dungeons to farm gear and reputation. Now, Cataclysm heroics are notorious for being difficult. And as someone who played Cataclysm back in the days, I very much remember having to crowd control mobs on a ton of packs as to not risk a full wipe. But that was definitely not my experience this time around. Yeah, no, dude, this one I agree with. I was expecting heroic dungeons in Cataclysm to be super heroic, because that's how I remember them being. And um, that experience hasn't really been it for me. Either, either... We were so bad at the game when I played OG Cataclysm that we just sucked so hard, and that's why it was hard. Or they have messed with the numbers to make it easier, to make it more accessible, to make bad players feel good. Conspiracy theory deluxe. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Heroics overall has been way easier than I was expecting and remembering. Maybe that's just uh, me having blurred vision, or memory, or us being super bad back in like, what was it, 2014, 2012? I don't, 2010. I don't even know when anymore, but a long time ago. Maybe we just sucked at the game. On all my tanks, I've hopped into heroics right after being 85 with little to no trouble. As far as I can tell, they are in a nerfed state and we as players are just much better at playing the game than we were all those years ago. 
And that's a bit of a shame in my opinion. I think that's the reason why Classic desperately needs dungeon progression content, as pretty much all content outside of raiding is made obsolete as soon as pre-raid best in slot gear is acquired. Whether that's a Mythic Plus type system, or a challenge mode that caps our item level, the Gamma dungeons from Rat just simply ain't it. While I'm definitely not huge on PvP, the addition of Raided Battlegrounds was absolutely huge and if you engage with it in a meaningful way, it can be one of the most fun things this game has to offer. Yep. Of course, the classic community doing what it does best has collectively agreed on optimizing the fun out of the lower ratings, with the meta being to have one big fight in the beginning and whoever loses that fight will AFK for the rest of the game. That, that, that's not just the classic WoW community though. Playing Cataclysm back in the day and Miss of Pandaria as well, and being a PvP Andy in retail for the most expansions and doing RBGs as my only way of doing PvP, this was a thing back in the day as well. You were either chasing rating, which if you're doing that now, then obviously you don't just have one fight. If you're chasing rating, then you do everything you can to win, but if you're chasing your cap, then what you do is you have one fight, and if you lose that fight and you get absolutely demolished, you literally AFK. Which is, that happened 10 years ago, in whatever expansion retail was in back then. I did PvP in Warlords of Draenor, same thing happened then as well, one big fight, then AFK, or like, either AFK or a free win. Same thing in Mr. Pandaria, either AFK if you lose, or free win if you win. Like, you had one big fight, whoever dominated that fight, Free win. That's not just the classic WoW community though. This becomes less and less the meta the higher up the rankings you go. So it's not a big problem in my opinion, so that the people who want their 2 set PvP gear for their PvE set can do that without much trouble. That brings us on to the raiding content, which is ultimately the bread and butter of the expansion. Let's talk briefly about the decision to make the raid size adjustable between 10 and 25 men, as I have some mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, I think it's a great thing for people who prefer a more tight-knit group of people to progress through the raids with. And as someone who has several alts but only one main raid team, it has been great to be able to put together a group of people to clear heroic content without needing to organize with 24 other players. While there are definitely some differences in the difficulty, it's overall much better tuned than I expected as I remember hearing horror stories from the 10-man difficulty in tier 11 from back in the days. That being said, playing 10-man still very much feels like playing 10-man in Wrath of the Lich King, despite it being created as a equal counterpart to 25-man. 10-man logs are meaningless and with it dropping less loot proportionally to 25-man, it still feels like 25-man rating is the way you're supposed to play the game. Looking at tier 11, I have to say that I'm a big fan. The three raids make you feel different as you go from boss to boss and give you a ton of flexibility in what order you choose to pursue your progression bosses. The difficulty curve is perfect for the average player in my opinion, but as someone who raids at a bit of a higher level, I would have preferred to have an end boss with a higher difficulty curve in order to have something to really progress on. Yeah. But instead, we got three end bosses which were rather similar in difficulty. But I'm not too bummed out about that, as Firelands will almost certainly have just that, depending on what kind of tuning we'll end up getting. Right now, I'm at the stage in Cataclysm where I'm in full maintenance mode, and with as much loot dropping as it does, I will probably be full bits before the next raid here comes out. That also means that if they decide to implement a gamma style dungeon system in the next phase like they've hinted at before, that content will likely be useless from a progression perspective, which will also be a bit of a bummer. Ultimately, I think Cataclysm is a solid expansion and is very similar to Wrath in my opinion. If you're the type of person who enjoys to raid log while playing a different- Yeah, then the heroic and beta and gamma dungeons even in Wrath as well, it was never a alternative to abyss progression. It was more an, a way to catch up. And in terms of abyss progression, the way it worked in Wrath, and the way it's probably going to work in Kata as well, is that if you're lacking a trinket that has a 5% drop chance and every melee needs it, aka you will never get it, you can spend that currency from those dungeons to buy that trinket, right? So you get the ability to buy raid loot with the currency and it drops the raid loot as well. It's just a catch-up mechanic, but some of the catch-ups are really good and could be a best-in-slot piece. 
but it will never be. If you're fully bis from heroic raids in phase one, you will not get any upgrades from heroic dungeons like the alpha dungeons in phase two. Because they will offer normal raid equivalent loot from phase one. So he's just too good at the game to uh, take advantage of alpha, beta, gamma. Game on the side, then this version of WoW is the perfect game for you. If you want to play more than just during raid night, then this expansion does not necessarily facilitate that, unless transmog and achievement hunting is something that you enjoy. This expansion, as a whole, gets a rating of eh, mid. Let me know how you've been experiencing characters. Uh, Rihanna gave it a eh, mid out of 10? Holy, okay. I would give it an eh, mid plus. But like, it, it's pretty good. And comparing it to Wrath, it has more to offer than Wrath outside of raiding hours, if you ask me. Because simply, once again, we have rated battlegrounds if you want to do PvP. We have transmog hunting if you want to do that. We have battle pet hunting, mount hunting. Um, leveling alts is probably more... It's more of a thing now with the revamp of uh, old Azeroth as well. There's a lot of things you can do outside of raiding hours. But the only question is, do you want to? If you're only playing one character... Like, if you're only playing one character, the only thing you want to do is raid, you don't care about transmog, then obviously there's not much to do, because you don't want to do shit. You just want to raid, right? I'm not talking to you, Heriani, but like as a, as a normal person, like, if, you, if you, the only thing that Eric wants to do in WoW is raid, he doesn't care about transmog at all, like, not a care in the world, he's not going to want to do anything. Leveling alts is not an activity for him. It, it doesn't exist. Rated battlegrounds as well doesn't exist for that person. But Cataclysm has a bunch of things you can do. The only question is, do you want to? For me, it's a pretty good expansion. It's um, I would rank it 8 out of 10. 7.5 to 8. So far, and if your experience differs from mine, there is plenty more content to come. So if you enjoy what I do, then make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. I will say I've been watching Rihanna's videos for quite a while, and it's been really helpful to me when I'm playing my Blood DK. I did not know that he was such a big, like heroic raider. And with that good parses. So that was surprise number one for me. And well done. Well done. If you want to show some love to, to Riani, which I really recommend, I will be linking the video down below in the pinned comment. So once again, go and show some love. Really good video. And uh, he's played Cataclysm just as much as me. Maybe even more. 400 hours though should be around the same that I have. But he's been doing it differently. So either way. Good video, show some love. If you enjoyed me reacting, let me know in the comments down below as well by giving, well, you can give the video a like and then let me know in the comments. And let me know if you had to rank Cataclysm on a 0 to 1 to 10 basis, where would you put it? I would love to see some comments about that. Either way, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I will see you again in the next video very soon.